Hey everybody, my name is Kenneth. If you've never seen me before, I talk about money, day trading, swing trading, investing, and living below your means. Now, if you've never seen me before, check out my channel. I've got playlists on dividends, on growth, on technical analysis, all that stuff. But I wanna try something new because frankly, I go on YouTube, I go on TikTok, I go on Instagram, and all the videos are the same, and I'm getting a little tired of it. Every video is, should you buy this? How much can you make from that? And to be honest, I make those videos too. But I wanna try something new here on my YouTube channel and talk more about personal stories revolving around money. Um, so feel free to kind of put this on in the background, think of it more of a podcast. I'm just gonna be over here rambling and talking about money and, and less of like, look at this chart, look at this graph. I've got videos like that. So if you wanna watch those videos, feel free. But if you want to have more of a discussion, which is what I'm really after here in the comments, let's try to have a discussion and talk about money. now. I know in a lot of households, talking about money is taboo. And I was very fortunate growing up that we talked about money. And I, I understand that it can, it can go both ways for sure. Let's say you come from a, an extremely wealthy family and you sit down and you talk to your parents and you go, hey, how does it work? How much do you make? Whatever. The parents who talk about it and they say, well, this is what I make and this is how, much we, this is how we can afford our lifestyle. Depending on how that kid hears it, it can be, well, you're rich. I want this toy. You can afford it buy it for me so it really comes down to the approach how we talk about money with our kids stuff like that on the other hand you have a lot of families who don't have a lot of money and they can't talk about things that they don't understand like dividends investing growth passive income rental properties they can't talk about it because they don't have it and in both of those households you always will have the parents who say it's rude to talk about money so shush go to your room don't ask don't ask about money it's rude it's rude and sometimes it's because they have a lot of it and they don't want their kids to know. And other times they don't have any and they can't talk about it because they don't understand it, which perpetuates the cycle of, I wish I knew how to invest, but my parents never invested. And I don't know how to invest. And I go to my parents, but they don't know. And they don't know, so they can't, don't teach me. And on the other hand, you have very wealthy parents who don't teach their kids because they don't want their kids to be spoiled when they grow older. So it really does come down to the approach and how it's talked about. Now, like I said, I was very fortunate. My mom was a, a lifelong investor, so was my grandma. So whenever I would ask about money, I would, I would get a lecture. And not a lecture in a bad way, but just like, here's how it works. And growing up, we were apartment kids. Now, I live in Washington, D.C., so a, a lot of people live in apartments. I live in an apartment today. And it's funny because whenever I make a video saying my apartment, they go, if you were so rich, you'd have a house. Uh, well, houses are awfully expensive in D.C. I'm very fortunate. My home is paid off. I live in a comfortable apartment. I'm very happy where I live. Would I like a house? Yes. But when the average house is $2 million in D.C. and a lot of them are teardowns at $2 million, you understand why people live in apartments. Um, I live in a city. It's a city. So it is what it is. But growing up, it was a very different world. You know, um, houses were expensive even in D.C. back then in the early 90s, but not like they are today. And I would come home from my friends because I was, I, was, uh, I was an apartment kid and all my friends were house, house kids. I didn't have any other friends um, who, who lived in apartments, maybe one or two. Most everyone else was a house kid. And I'd come home from being at my friend's house and I'd walk in and I'd slam the door and I'd look at my mom and I'd go, why don't we live in a house? And instead of saying, it's rude to talk about money, go to your room, my mom would sit me down and say, well, I'm a speech therapist. This is what I make. And this is what a house costs. And as an eight-year-old, you're sitting there and you're going, well, you know, this is what you make. This is what a house costs. So in like six or seven years, you could buy, you could pay off that house. And I goes, not quite. You know, and these are the conversations that my mom and I would have. My mom would say, well, you know, I'm paying for homeowner's insurance, condo fees, mortgage, car payment, car insurance, gas, groceries, clothes, um, saving, investing. All that money doesn't just go right into a house. All that money is spent. And I, oh, you know, you're very slowly as an eight-year-old, you're connecting the dots. But I wanted to talk about something a little different, which is how little kids view money. And I'm going to tie it back into today because I have a friend who has some little kids and we had a conversation recently and it was so funny how these conversations mirror one another. So go back to maybe, maybe 1993, maybe I'm eight years old and we're hosting Thanksgiving in our house. And I had some friends over, some family over, and there were a bunch of kids. I was the oldest kid. So maybe I was eight, maybe I was 10. I don't know. And there were a bunch of kids in the house who were three, four, and dinner's getting ready. And my mom says, hey, kind of take everyone into the bathroom to wash their hands, get ready for dinner. So we're all sitting in the bathroom, we're all washing our hands. And this little girl looks up to me and she goes, 
we have four bathrooms in our house and you only have one. Why? And I didn't know. I didn't have an answer. I wasn't like, well, you see. I said, I, I don't know. And she looked at me and she said, is it because you're poor? And that was the first time I had ever thought in terms of whether we were poor or not. I knew something was up because all my friends lived in houses and we lived in an apartment. And, you know, I, I understood enough, but I didn't think in terms of wealthy and poor. And that was the first time that I was like, oh my God, we're poor. That's what it is. And from that moment on, I, I used the number of bathrooms that my friends had to define wealth, right? And I know it's wrong and silly, but when you're eight and 10 years old, uh, and to be honest, I, I did it for probably way longer than I should have used that like bathroom metric as a, def of, as a definer of wealth. But I definitely did from that moment on, remember going to friends' houses and counting their bathrooms. Like, especially if I was doing it there as like a sleepover, you know, I'd walk around and I'd be like, one, two, there's a bathroom in the basement. There's two bathrooms. Oh my God, they have four bath. Oh my God, they're rich. They have four bathrooms. I'd go to other friends' houses and they'd have three bathrooms or even two or even one and a half. You know, you can't go, I guess you can go lower than one and would be having zero bathrooms, meaning probably homeless. Um, but for someone who lived in a, in a home, you couldn't go lower than one, right? Everyone has a bathroom, but that's it. That's baseline, one. Anything above that, an eight-year-old, 10-year-old, 12-year-old me perceived that as they were much wealthier than us. So even the friend who had one and a half bathrooms was wealthier. And I used this way too long uh, as like, as the definer of, of wealth. And what I noticed, what was most funny to me was recently I'm hanging out with a friend of mine who has two little kids and they're an apartment family. They, they live in an apartment and all of their school friends live in big houses. And I said, hey, I gotta ask you a question. Uh, being, being an apartment family, your little kids, most of their friends live in houses, correct? And he said, yeah. And I said, how do they, do they ever come home and talk about it with you or ask you things or say things? And I told him the bathroom story. I said, I used it for way too long as a metric of wealth. Three bathrooms versus our one, they were wealthier than us. Do your kids do anything like that? And he said, funny enough, they do. And he said, one, time, one day recently, a friend of my, my friend was at a, my kid was at a friend's house and kid came home and they said, they have a staircase inside their house. And he was like, yeah, a lot of people have staircases in the, inside. And they were like, well, we don't, why don't we? And he used that as an opportunity to talk to them about money and how much he makes and how much his wife makes and how much, how expensive everything is and how having two kids is very expensive. And I was like, damn, so... Even, even, you know, 30 years later, I'm 38. So even 30 years later, his eight-year-old kids are having similar conversations. Also, he said that they, they went to a friend's the other day for dinner and they knock on the door and the parents opened the door and there was like a second door, you know, like they had like a little foyer or something like that where there was like a double front door. And the girl looked up at, at, his, at her parents and she said, they have two front doors. And, um, and he was like, yeah, some people have two front doors. And the, the kids went into the house and they were like, wait a minute, they have two front doors and they have another door in the back for the deck. And they have another door downstairs in the basement to go out through the basement. They have four doors. And it reminded me of my bathroom, you know, my bathroom metric of comparing, of comparing wealth. Um, and, and really though, at the end of the day, how fortunate to come from a household where your parents can talk about money because a lot of parents don't talk about money. Uh, they don't talk about it, one, because it's taboo and two, because maybe they can't. You know, this is how that cycle perpetuates. I think I said this already, but I was filming a video earlier and it cut and it didn't save the video. So if I'm repeating myself, you know, it is what it is. But this is how that cycle perpetuates where you have parents who can't talk about it because they don't understand it. And then they have kids and they don't talk to the kids about it because they don't, they can't teach something they don't understand. And then those kids grow up and they start coming on apps like TikTok and YouTube and they start saying, hey, should I invest? I want to invest. And, but my parents never taught me. Well, their parents never taught them because the parents didn't know themselves. On the flip side of that though, you have extremely wealthy parents. And this is where parenting is tricky. I'm, I'm guessing because I have no kids, but I'm guessing that it's a very, it's a very tight, like a tight rope. You know, you have to walk that balance of talking about money, but not 
in a way that your kids then look at you and go, hey, I want this Xbox and I know how much you make, so I know you can afford it. It's a fine line between sharing so much that your kids then expect things and they're spoiled uh, or saying like, you know, if the parents were to say, well, I'm not gonna buy you that. Well, why not? You're rich, you can afford it. Um, it's gotta be kind of tricky to navigate those waters of saying like, I'm gonna teach you about money and you're gonna learn. One of the things that my mom did, I've talked about this before, um, but one of the things that my mom did when I was a kid and it, it helped me understand about money was I would say to her, hey, I want this toy and it's a hundred bucks, you know? And my mom would say to me, well, if you can go and earn the money for that toy, I'll split it with you. But you have to save that other half. Save. I wish she had said invest, um, but save, which is still fine. Um, teaches you about money. And I would go and I would, we, as we lived in an apartment, I would go to the laundry room in my building and I'd put up a little sign saying, I'll do odd jobs. If you have cats, I'll cat sit. If you have uh, a storage room that needs to be cleaned out, I'll help you clean out your storage room. If you have a heavy package that needs to be brought upstairs from the lobby, I'll carry it for you, you know, at different prices. You know, carrying up a package, five bucks. Cat sitting, $15. Once in the morning, once in the evening, that's 30 bucks a day. If you want your cat once a day, it's 15. Um, just looking at all the ways I could make and generate a little extra income. Once I got a little older, I held up, I put up signs in neighboring buildings that allowed dogs, our building didn't allow dogs. And I'd say, hey, walk your dog. Um, and I got phone calls from elderly people who had little dogs but couldn't walk them. So I started walking dogs in the building. When it snowed a lot, I'd put up signs in the building, I'll shovel your car. Um, and I made money and I would make the money and I'd say, I'd come to my mom and I'd say, okay, I made a hundred, I made a hundred bucks, the toy's a hundred bucks. And my mom would say, I'll split it with you. Sometimes my mom was even cool enough to say, you earned that money, saved the whole thing. I'm going to buy you the toy. Um, anyway, other times my mom would say, well, you earned the whole hundred bucks. Go buy the toy on your, on your own as I got older. And I would say, uh, I, what I liked most about having to earn my own money is all of a sudden I started thinking, this is something I talk about on TikTok as the investor mindset versus the consumer mindset. But as a little kid, I still thought in the save versus spend mindset. And I would, I earned all this money shoveling cars. God, it was hard. Do I really want to spend all that money on this toy? Now that I know how hard I worked to get that money, maybe I'd rather just save the money. I don't really, I don't know. Do I really want this toy? I found myself all the time saying that, you know, I want a PlayStation or I want the new Nintendo or I want whatever the toy was back in the nineties. Once I earned that money, I, it, it was a lot harder for me to part with it because I understood how hard it was for me to make that money the first time. And that's one of the things I talk about now with that shift as adults. It's a lot harder for adults. It's a lot easier when you're a kid, you get into that mindset of, hey, I earned this. I don't want to spend it. I would rather save it, really rather invest it. Um, and one thing great for parents to consider is let's say your kid wanted a new Xbox. Um, and they earned the money for that Xbox. Well, Microsoft owns Xbox. Instead of saying to your kid, you know, um, if, if you're fortunate enough to say, hey, you earned that money, I'm going to buy you the Xbox. But the money that you made on, on trying to raise money, raise capital to buy it, I want you to buy Microsoft stock instead because you want their toy or Netflix or Chipotle, whatever the kid likes. It doesn't have to be that same product. Maybe they want a new pair of Nikes, but Nike, you maybe is a garbage stock or maybe it's not that great of a stock and you don't want them in Nike, maybe you could say, hey, put it in an index fund. You earned it. And if you're not fortunate enough to be able to do that and that you can split the gift with them or maybe they have to buy it outright, either way, it gets them in that mindset of, I don't know if I, I don't know if I want it. And maybe they do want it. Maybe they do want it. Maybe they said, hey, I earned it and I want the toy. I'm going to get the toy. Fine. You know, you have to let them do what they want with their money. Um, but it's hard as an adult, man. It's hard. I have, a lot of, I have a lot of friends who are trying to make that shift right now from consumer to investor. They're looking around and they're like, God, everything is so expensive. I want this thing, but I can't afford it. And I want this and I can't afford it. And they, they hustle and they do side hustles. I have friends who work two, three jobs, side hustles, walking dogs, whatever. They get that money and they feel it too. They go, ah, I don't want to part with this. I'm going to save it. And I'm sitting there going like, no, invest it. <laughs> um, it's hard to it's hard to make that switch as an adult though from investor to cons or from consumer to investor. That's really what I want to hammer home in this video here 
is is learning and 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 forcing yourself to switch your mindset. It's small. Start small. I know people always go like buy the coffee, buy the thing, but it really is about mindset over anything. Canceling Starbucks, making your coffee at home, it's not going to make you a millionaire. Maybe it'll add a little bit extra to your retirement account. That's not the point. The point isn't that, oh, you can have an extra 30,000 in your portfolio. That's not the point. It's larger than that. People see it so black and white. You know, it's, it's I can't afford a house, so I'm going to drink the Starbucks. You know, or, you know, getting rid of Starbucks isn't going to give me that, isn't going to give me the investment portfolio, a million dollar investment portfolio, so I'm going to drink the coffee. But it's larger than that. It's more nuanced. It's the mindset. It's, well, I can treat myself to a Starbucks and I can treat myself to all the, sc the streaming services and I can treat myself to this and I can treat myself to that and I'm so miserable in my life and my job sucks and my home sucks and the situation with my kids and whatever, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to treat, 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 treat. And all those little things add up. That's what this is really about. All right, I've taken enough of your time. It's 16 minutes. Thank you so much for watching. Again, my name is Kenneth. to talk about investing, day trading, swing trading, and living below your means. If any or all of that is interesting to you, you know what to do. Hit the buttons. Thanks for watching and have a good day.